Well, it's time to step out of bass mode. Cooler months are here. It's back into the salt for me. It's been a long time. Apologies for those of you that like the flathead videos and other salt and estuary species. But between COVID and other types of distractions, fishing has been few and far between. Let's see how we go. Back to the local. Let's see what it has to offer. Got a tide change coming up. Got some showers forecast to hit a little bit later today. But I'm just happy to be on the water. Well, I've been on the water for a while now and I've been casting and trolling and jigging and getting sweet FA. Sweet Fanny Adams for those of you playing along at home. And yeah, so clouds are coming over a bit threatening. It's enough to get you a little bit dispirited, but hey, I'm out on the water. I'm in with a chance. A chance of getting a very wet ass. But also the chance of catching a fish. So let's keep going. How you going? Good. Seeing much on the sander? Yep. Gotcha. I just knew there had to be a decent fish sitting under there. Oh, it's been too long since I've felt that. That tap on the line that said you've put the lure in the right place at the right time. I'm just going to back that drag off a little bit. That feels like a decent fish, but sometimes you just can't tell. Sometimes the little ones play hard and the big ones play doughy, but it certainly is swimming hard and it's swimming back into the current, so that's all good signs for a decent fish. I'm only running 8 pound fluorocarbon leader here, so if that fish has got the, the soft plastic deep, then the raspy teeth of what I'm assuming is a flathead can do some damage so I don't want to go too hard but I want to keep pressure on that line I don't want to let it go slack because that's when the hook point can let go got a good solid hook nice TT jig head 
got 10 pound platypus braid, 8 pound platypus fluorocarbon, on my 2 to 4 kilo Akuma. This is the Ceros. As you can see, it's putting a decent bend in it, and I'm just letting that rod absorb the lunges of the fish and letting it take drag against the reel when it needs to. So, oh, it's been a long time. It's a different kind of feeling and a different kind of fight to all of those bass surface hits. It's a different kind of adrenaline. Bass are very quick, very brutal. It's all over in a short period. Whereas this, it's a more drawn out process. It gives you time to get nervous. It gives you time to think about all the things that can go wrong. Look at those head shakes. All of that soaring backwards and forwards on the leader. All of those things that can go wrong going through your mind. But that's the time to relax. This is the moment you fish for when you're hooked up, so this is when you have to trust. Trust in your knots, trust in your gear, trust that you're doing the right things. And if things do go pear-shaped, you learn from the experience. I'd be guessing from the fight that this is a fish that's in its 50s, but it could be bigger, so I just don't want to rush it. I've got my net on hand, so especially in a kayak, it's very helpful to have everything set out and ready for you. I'm going to take a moment to get this out of the way so it doesn't inhibit my movements. It's tempting to just tighten that drag a couple of notches and try and bully the fish in that last couple of meters. But that could end in disaster almost as certainly as taking too long and letting the fish soar through the leader. So it's a waiting game. There's my leader knot. So we're about a meter, just over a meter away from seeing the fish in this murky water. Will the fish's stamina give out before my patience? You know what? It's not a flathead, it's a jewfish. <coughs> not a big one. But there you go. Oh, very happy about that. <sighs> Much like a flathead, they have those small teeth that can rasp through your leader. It's this time of year when the jewfish are out. And they do tend to congregate in the same type of area that the flathead do, so. Catching a dewy was high on my list of things to do and I've been lucky enough to do it. As I say, not a big one, he won't be legal. So what I need to do is I need to take care of him, get him in the water until I'm in a point where I'm able to safely release him. I'm happy about that. So you can see I'm just running water through the fish's gills while I've got it in the net as I'm moving forward. I just want to get myself to, to land where I can uh, better deal with this fish and go from there but I'm making sure that I take care of this fish I'm not going to keep it it's not even legal so uh, the best thing to do is take care of it thanks for your help Callum no worries, man. I'll have to check your channel out. thanks mate and here we go we're just getting ready to release this little uh, jew fish we won't bother putting him on the measure he's definitely not legal but he put up a great little tussle, and that was on the three inch minnows. That one's in midnight oils. 
So we're just going to go ahead and get the jig head out of him. Right in the top of the lip, which is perfect. Didn't give him a chance to saw through that leader. The leader's in perfect condition. So we're just going to drop that over the edge. He's been swimming in the net, so he should be quite healthy. Oh, yes, he was quite healthy. Off he goes. Thanks, mate. Something followed that up. Our old mate, Mr. Flathead. Felt the tapping. Just dropped it back a little bit with the rod tip. And got him. There we go, he's gonna be very green. He's got a lot of fight left in him. So, we're just gonna be very careful. that hook out of him and send him on his way. I switched up this time. I went to a slightly larger lure in a darker profile as the cloud cover was coming over. The sun's started to hide behind the clouds. And as we can see, we've got ourselves a lovely little flathead right in the corner of the jaw with that TT jig head. You can see there, one quarter. And the four inch diesel minnows in gold rush color, one of my favorites. He'd be a good eating size flathead, but that's not our mission today. We're just out here to enjoy ourselves and enjoy a bit of nature at its finest. Let's get that hook out. Send him on his way. See you mate. Always a good idea after you've caught a flathead in particular, or most fish, just check your leader, make sure there's no nicks in it. This one feels all good. Had a nice hook up in the corner of the jaw. The jig head's still nice and sharp. Leader's still good to go. So we'll just put a little bit more procure on there. This one's the mullet. There's plenty of mullet in this system. So I'm just gonna put a bit of that around the the Z-Man and we're ready to catch another one. Sitting in deep, casting shallow, hopping our lure back, hoping to entice another flathead. Just waiting for that jig head to hit the bottom. There it goes, just notice the belly in the line. A few hops, take up the slack. few hops, take up the slack. It's as simple as that, just repeat that until it gets intercepted by a hungry fish or it gets back to the kayak. Check out this bad boy. This is the five inch diesels.
Let's see if we can't tempt a big mama. There we go, there we go. Something followed the big plastic up right beside the kayak. There we go. Does, goes to show, doesn't need to be a big fish to take a big plastic. Look at that, that's a decent flatty, but nothing huge. But he's attacked a five inch diesel minnows. Goes to show you. Don't be afraid to throw a big plastic. See you, mate. Must have put it right on his head. Whose head did I put it on though? That's amazing. Little flathead fella. Hit it on the drop. Wow. Look at you. No, 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 no. I don't want to finish the day by being spiked. Thank you very much. I didn't even have time to give that a bit of a jiggle. He's hit that. As it's hit the, hit the bottom, jumped on it. See you, mate. Well, I'm almost back to the ramp, so that's as good a time as any to finish. I think that was three flathead and a nice little Jew. It's a good way to get my uh, get my mojo back after many months off the salt. Hello and goodbye. It's over and out. Roger.